This is Witchbase News for Friday the 29th of September 2023 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week ...Canon Research wants your help as it seeks the source of the landscape signal Frontier makes some adjustments to the livestream schedule as their Halloween celebrations approach and there's about to be an explosive mining rush at the Bubbles 8 Titans. As always if you enjoy our videos please do hit the like button and if you haven't already be sure to subscribe and ding the bell so you don't miss any of our Elite Dangerous content and if you'd like to help directly support the Burr Pit you can also join our Patreon ...links to that and everything else are below. Commander LCU No Fool Like One sends word this week that Canon Research have launched an initiative to investigate what they call the landscape signal and they're looking for willing commanders to get involved and contribute to it. If like me you were previously unaware of just what the landscape signal is then allow me to enlighten you. From anywhere in the galaxy it's a signal that can be faintly heard coming from the general vicinity of the centre of the galaxy. When the audio signal is analysed in a spectrogrammic form it produces a wireframe image similar to a mountain hence the name. The signal has existed since the very early days of Elite Dangerous ...pre the horizons expansion and it's believed it emanates from an area of space near Sagittarius A that is itself inhabited by 20,000 stars. It's these 20,000 star systems that Canon, Lovem, intend to investigate to look for anything unusual. It doesn't take a genius to acknowledge that the systematic searching of 20,000 star systems is no small task but the ever resourceful and ingenious Canon are up to the task and to aid the effort and ensure no duplication of the work undertaken they have created a system that will allow explorers to target 10 systems at a time that they can reserve for analysis. Of course there is absolutely the possibility that the search will turn up nothing unusual whatsoever. Elite Dangerous History has had its fair share of, so far at least, unsuccessful attempts to find legends like Raxler for example. But Canon themselves have said that even if they find nothing at all then they will have demonstrated conclusively that there was nothing to find. Without wishing to get overly flowery I think any hardened explorer in Elite Dangerous will tell you that exploration is oftentimes in and of itself its own reward and it's more often the case that at the end of an expedition it's not so much about the destination but the journey you take to get there. Being involved in mass group efforts like the landscape expedition are themselves the point of the effort. With all that said, as is always the case with Elite Dangerous you never really know what may be found. At the very least the expedition is likely to turn up some stunning vistas and galactic points of interest and that alone makes it worth the time spent. The landscape expedition is underway right now and has already surveyed well over a thousand systems and it's open to anyone willing to commit their time to the effort. To get involved yourself you'll find everything you need in the description below this video. Halloween is nearly upon us yet again and with its inevitable spooky return comes the Elite Dangerous Halloween themed taint to the weekly Stellar Screenshots competition ...that being the appropriately titled Stellar Scream Shots. This regular seasonal fixture is the one chance in the year to win yourself the malevolent ghast paint job for the Asp Explorer. To be in with a chance post your creepy themed screenshots to the Stellar Screenshots forum thread or on social media with the hashtag Stellar Screenshots. Whilst we're talking all things Frontier the delay of the previous Frameshift Live livestream has bumped the cadence of the planned livestreams that came after it and so not only will the next Frameshift Live livestream from Frontier be on the 19th of October but it's also the Halloween special edition of the show. FDev have already announced that the show has planned a significant hardware giveaway so be sure not to miss that. You'll find links and details for all of this in the description below. 
The current war with the Thargoid started just over a year ago now with the detonation of the Proteus device in HIP 22460 by the moustache twirling, now suspected dead ghost in the machine Caleb Salvation Witcherly. Longtime commanders will remember that Salvation's whoops Thargpocalypse moment was prefaced by months of events and Galnet news stories that saw Salvation's rise to prominence alongside a simultaneous character assassination and deconstruction of all things Aegis. With the removal of Aegis Salvation was granted the room and the freedom to set about seriously proving his ineptitude to the entire galaxy an opportunity he gleefully embraced with aplomb. Having caused his own death alongside tens of thousands of followers, defenders and independent commanders Salad Aggravation uploaded his consciousness into the Guardian equivalent of Dropbox and disappeared into the ether never to be heard from again at least for now. Having had their strawberries roundly stamped on by humanity for a second time the horror inducing interstellar lurgy lettuce from beyond the stars finally lost their previously bottomless patience with our bumbling around in little tin spaceships and turned their great lidless eye toward the source of their woes ...the bubble of humanity around Sol and thus began an all out invasion that is now in its 11th month and as at this recording has seen 481 systems fall to the Thargoid advance. As things stand humanity is holding back the tsunami of spiteful spinach but it's only being held back. There are no signs as of yet at least that the 8 titan enveloping maelstroms that surround Earth on one side will ever be removed. As though the horror story of a xenocidal madman deliberately angering an ancient and technologically superior uncaring alien species wasn't enough then ...in case you haven't been keeping up with current events then I'd recommend you steal yourself dear viewer because oh yes it gets worse. As part of their Blitzkrieg invasion of inhabited space the Thargoids as we've already heard rapidly overran nearly 500 systems. So rapid was this invasion particularly in its opening moments that millions likely billions of human souls were displaced from planets, starports and orbiting facilities as they fell to the Thargoid advance. Whilst many of those souls have escaped, been evacuated or rescued many millions more were left unaccounted for and after hearing a leaked conversation held in the higher echelons of Aegis command structure it's become apparent that many of those missing millions may have suffered a fate worse than death. A new scanner update developed by Aegis can now identify locations inside the structure of a given titan Thargoid mothership where it seems are located a number of environment sustaining pods and inside those pods are living human prisoners. The Thargoids have been known to scoop up human escape pods but now it seems they've been abducting us on an industrial scale and further leaks from Aegis via the Thargoid sensitive Savant D2 have determined that the captured humans are not being held as food or fuel for the war effort but perhaps more disturbingly the Thargoids consider their captives important to their plans to invade the bubble in some way. Chilling to say the least. Aegis and indeed the collective industrial might of humankind is not however resting on this disturbing revelation. Having discovered where our missing people are the technology has been developed to directly extract the pods from their subsurface locations around the titans right from under the Thargoids noses. To be honest I'm doubtful they have a nose but you take my point I'm sure. A community goal was initiated with the server tick this week to gather the resources necessary to build a serious corporation developed technological solution. Enter the subsurface extraction missile. Yes we're going to get our people back from the clutches of the vile alien horde and we're going to do it by deploying repurposed precision targeted rocket propelled munitions usually reserved for the explosive mining of precious materials from rock. Firing explosive filled auto targeting and drilling missiles at squishy human captives inside a colossal alien starship that is hell bent on the devastation of all that we hold precious and dear. It's genius. What could possibly go wrong? I'm just sorry that we can't issue the captive subjects with protective brightly coloured Bermuda shorts and woolly hats to really enhance the experience. 
The community goal to industrialise production of the Humanoscoop 5000 extraction missile runs until next Thursday. Up for grabs as a participant are paint jobs to the top 75% and then one or two missile scoopertrons for the usual respective higher tiers. Assuming we get any of our people back in one piece it'll be interesting to see what stories they can tell about their incarceration or indeed what may have been done to them while they were incarcerated. Will you be helping Canon search for the landscape signal source? Are you planning on winning this years Halloween stellar screenshots and do you think explosive missiles are the best way to extract captives from a perilous situation? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….O7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.